What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to talk about analyzing graphs of a single quantitative variable. I underline graphs because, well, we'll talk about that, I guess, here shortly, but we're analyzing the graphs of a quantitative variable. All right, so analyzing a quantitative variable is so much different than categorical variables. First off, there's just so much more we could do with numbers. I mean, this is math class, right? There's not a whole lot you could do with words. Anytime you analyze a quantitative variable, you want to mention three things. You want to talk about its shape, its center, and its variability, which most people call spread. But remember, variability is a word that talks about how your data is spread out, how your data varies. And there is a fourth thing. I don't list it as a, as a must because sometimes data doesn't have any. But if there are possible outliers, you should mention those too. But, 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 but. How you discuss shape, center, and spread is very different depending on if you only have a graph. If you only have a graph in front of you, how you talk about shape, center, and spread is different than if you actually have the data values in front of you. So it's important that you understand in this lesson, we are learning how to talk about shape, center, and spread by looking at a graph. We can do the same three things, but in a very different way when the actual data values are in front of us. But no matter what, you gotta talk about the shape, set, and spread. That's all that needs to be said. But how you do that with the graph, eh, a little different than how you do it with the actual data values. So in this video, we're gonna focus on the graph. Uh, let's talk about shape first. Shape is a lot of fun, not too bad. The shape of a distribution is described by its number of peaks and by its possession of symmetry, its tendency to skew, or its uniformity. Distributions that are skewed have more points plotted on one side of the graph than on the other. We'll talk about that here shortly. Now, when you're analyzing the shape of a distribution, there's kind of two things you want to look at. Is it unimodal or bimodal, which we'll get to, or is it symmetric and skewed? So you can usually talk about, hey, it's unimodal, symmetric, unimodal, skewed, bimodal, symmetric, right? You can kind of combine these four things together. But again, you can't be unimodal and bimodal. It can't be symmetric and skewed. In those cases, it's one or the other. All right, so what do we mean by unimodal, bimodal, or even uniform? Well, uni means one. So unimodal means that there's one clearly defined peak in the data. Bimodal, bi meaning two, means there are two clearly defined peaks in the data. And I say clearly defined, meaning they're separated. When you have unimodal data, you might see a couple peaks, but they're all really close to the center, kind of forming the peak of a mountain, unimodal. Uniform is when the data is very evenly distributed. You don't see any major differences amongst all of the data values. They're all kind of the same when you're looking at it. So let's look at three histograms to see these three different distribution shapes. So on the far left, we have unimodal. We see this one kind of peak in the middle. Bimodal, clearly two different peaks. It's like looking at two mountains next to each other. Where uniform is really when the data doesn't range much at all, or excuse me, it doesn't change much at all. So again, I don't really have lines here, but imagine if we had bins here, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, uh, 4D, sorry, 50, got ahead of myself, 60, 70. Okay, if uniform means that, hey, you got a roughly, this looks pretty exact, but roughly the same amount of data from 10 to 20, as 20 to 30, as 30 to 40. Again, each bin contains roughly the same amount of data, where unimodal, we see these bins in the middle that contain the bulk of the data. Bimodal, we have two bins um, where we see kind of the bulk of that data. Okay, now let's talk about symmetry and skewness. A symmetry graph is one that is balanced on the two sides. Put a mirror in the middle, left side mirrors the right side. Most kids understand symmetry. Skewed graph is this, has significantly more data falling on one side of the graph. So here's some pictures of symmetric. We see all three of these are very symmetric. The first one here, we could put a line straight down the middle. The two sides clearly mirror each other. We see a falling off of data, lessening of data to the smaller values, and a lessening of data to the, to the larger values. Most data is stuck in the middle. This one right here is also symmetric. It's not perfectly symmetric, but very few data in the real world is going to be perfect. But we definitely see the lower, not too many values in the lower intervals, not too many data values in the upper intervals, most in the middle, nice and symmetric. Now this graph right here is also symmetric, but symmetric in a very different way, but it's still symmetric. Put that mirror down the center, left side and right side are close mirror images of each other, but it's a little bit different here where we see a 
bimodal, right? Big chunk of data on the left, big chunk of data on the right, and not so much in the middle, but it's still symmetric. So this is great because what we see in these first two is we see unimodal and symmetric, where on the far right, we see bimodal and symmetric. So that's where we could actually start mixing up some of those vocabulary words we're using here. Now, these three graphs are all skewed right. I know this gets a little bit tricky and you got to study these terms to get this straight, but skewed right is where there's actually the majority of your data is on the left side or the lower values. So in all three of these graphs, we see that peak or the majority of data on the left and it skews to the right, all right? Um, you could kind of think of it as your right foot. Your right foot has the bigger toes on the left, smaller toes on the right. That's your right foot, skewed right. That's kind of how I think about it. But anyway, that's skewed right, where we see the tailing off to the right-hand side. So again, we see a bunch of data, 0 to 8, 0 to 10, bunch of data right down in these lower intervals. The upper intervals, not so much data, skewed to the right. We could even actually see this in a stem and leaf plot. We just kind of have to tilt our heads to the side a little bit here, right? But once again, we see this skew to the right. Bulk of data is on the left-hand side, the lower numbers. So most data is 60 to 80. But we do see that slow skewness and a couple of values. Again, maybe it's a really high value over here. But again, that's an example of a skew right. And again, you could see that either in a stem plot, just like you could see that in histogram. But again, you got to get through your head, skewed right, majority of the data is on the left, slowly drops down to the right. And of course, skewed left is the opposite of that, where the majority of the data is on the right-hand side, the majority of the data is on the right-hand side, and the data tails off or gets lower on the left. So again, kind of like your left foot, big toes on the right, smaller toes on the left, so skewed left. So once again, when we look at this histogram here, we see the majority, right? The big unimodal, the big chunk of data, the big peak is around 40. And then again to the left, we see less and less and less and less and less and less data. Less and less and less and less. So that is again skewed left, okay? Less data on the left, the majority of the data is on the right. So you got to study that a little bit to get those right so we don't mess those up. But again, this would be called unimodal as well, unimodal and skewed left. So we could kind of combine these words. So here's a nice look at kind of eight different shapes and, you know, ignore the numbers going on here. Just kind of look at the shape. Um, on the left hand side, all of these are symmetric. So all four on the left are symmetric, but symmetric in different ways, right? The top are unimodal. We see this kind of big chunk in the middle and big chunk in the middle. Now, be careful. I'll get some kids that look at this one right here and say, so was that bimodal? There are two bins that are high. Yes, but they're forming one peak together. Like if you're looking at that as a mountain range, you say that's one mountain. So again, yes, there are two intervals that are equal in height, but they're forming that one unimodal peak. Whereas on the bottom here, shape five and shape six, we definitely see two mountain ranges, two different peaks. That's definitely bimodal. But these graphs are also very symmetric as well. Toss that line down the middle, the left side and the right side mirrors each other. So you can be symmetric in different ways, unimodal or bimodal. On the right-hand side here, we definitely have our skew, right? So here we are skewed to the right, majority of the data is on the left. Here we are skewed to the left, majority of data is on the right, okay? Get that straight. I know it's going to take a couple days for you to remember all that. But again, those are also unimodal because we see these one peaks, this one spot where the, the data is peaking the most. We're on the bottom here. Both of these are bimodal. Even though one peak is bigger than the other, we still see two peaks, two mountain ranges. We see this peak here, this peak here. Yeah, one peak is a little lower, but we still see that, that those two peaks. And again, those are also you know, somewhat um, skewed because if we think about this, um, when we look to the right, the data is definitely going down. So that's skewed right. It's not going down like it is right here. This is where we see that slow gradual down, 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 down. Where here it's like down, 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 comes up a little bit, but then back down. That's still technically skewed to the right as well, but bimodal. Same thing here. We see the skewed left. It definitely is going down as we move to left. Even though it peaks back up for a little bit, it still doesn't reach all the way up to the original peaks. That's why that is still skewed left. So those are the kind of eight different shapes we see there, kind of combining some of these words, symmetric, skewed, unimodal, bimodal. Here's a couple more as well, pretty simple here, pretty self-explanatory, where we see the uniform, skewed left, skewed right, um, bimodal, and so forth. All right, now there is one distribution, I hesitate to say this to you guys yet, 
but this is going to kind of pay off for me later. Um, anytime you are unimodal and symmetric, any shape that is both unimodal and symmetric, that we call that a normal distribution. Now, don't worry too much about why we call it that way right now. And I actually would rather you not use that word right now. But in the future, this is going to become a very, very, very important model, a very, very important type of distribution where we see unimodal and symmetric. That's kind of like a mountain. Like almost somebody dumped a mountain of rocks and we see that nice shape there. That's important for you guys to note for later. Okay, now let's talk about center. So when you're describing the center of a distribution, really you're just trying to look at it and give one value that you think best summarizes all of the data. Now remember, when you're looking at a histogram, you don't know all the individual values. Most kids want to say, why don't you use the average? We're going to get to that. But right now, we don't know all the exact individual values. We just know how many are in each bin or each interval. So right now, we don't want to talk about mean or average yet. Hold off on that. It's going to come very soon. But we just want to talk about one value that summarizes all the data simply based on looking at the graph. Okay. If it's uniform, it's pretty easy to do. Just look for that center peak. If it's bimodal, it's a little bit tougher. But again, once we examine the actual data in coming videos, we'll be much more precise in talking about center. So here's three graphs. You know, if I had to talk about the center, you're looking for that peak. The center for here would be 40. I'd say most data is near 40. Definitely some values to the left, but the peak, the center looks to be around 40. Here, I'd say probably around eight. The center of the data looks to be around eight. You could maybe even go a little bit lower because that's where the actual peak is, but you're trying to keep a nice balance of the fact there are still some values to the right. And when you're nice and symmetric, the, shape, the center is very easy, somewhere around 48. Again, we're looking for one number that we feel best describes the data. And I know you want to start thinking about things you've learned in the past, and that's fine, but we'll get a lot more specific when we can actually see and know the individual data values. All right, next we want to talk about spread or variability as well. Variability is talking about how the data varies. Very few sets of data are all identical values, right? Most of the time there is some variability. But wait, like, think about that. Like, you know, if you have data that's every value is 50. Everybody scored a 50 on the midterms. You have 1,000 kids in, in your college maybe, and everybody got a 50 on their midterm. Well, that obviously has no spread at all. It was very consistent. And if everybody was, you know, maybe 45 to 55 on the midterm, so you got a little bit of spread, but you're still pretty consistent, 45 to 55. However, if your data was from zero to 100, now you've got this big spread where some kids did absolutely terrible and some kids did really, really good getting 100. So again, that's what we talk about spread or variability. Um, so here we're looking for an overall range of the data as well as, you know, where the majority of the data falls. Same thing as we just said earlier with center. We will get a lot more specific talking about spread when we actually have the data values in front of us. But right now we're just looking at some graphs. We want to kind of get a general feel for where the data is at, that spread. So here is a graph. Um, just so you know, this is um, looking at uh, very simple terms here, right? So if we're looking at this values, um, these were heart rates of patients. We had several patients, we took their, their heart rates while they were exercising. And when we talk about the spread here, uh, well, you know what, let's go back and talk about shape for a second. I hope everybody would agree unimodal. We kind of see that one peak there. And I would probably say mostly symmetric. If you tilt your head, um, you know, maybe slightly skewed, um, to the to the to the smaller values on the uh, left hand side, but really not really. This sixty eight. If if you took that sixty eight away, you'd probably say, yeah, that's really symmetric. But you know, so don't let one value ruin you. So I think that's pretty symmetric here. But now, look okay, at I want to talk about spread right now. So how what would I mention for spread here? I'd say, well, the variability of the patient heart rates went from sixty eight all the way to one hundred sixty eight, which kind of seems like a large spread, but it looks like the overwhelmingly large majority of patients were around 110 to 140. So this is where the large amount of patients fall. You can even, even if you said 120 to 140, right? The point is that we do see this overall spread, but we do see this big chunk of tons and tons of patients that a heart rate in the 120s and the 130s. So, you know, don't just talk about overall spread, min to max. Talk about where the majority of data falls if you see that big chunk in the middle as well. 
All right, again, I know that you're being really loose right now. You're not getting to extreme detail, but that's that's the problem, right? When you don't have all the values in front of you, you just have these graphs. All right, so let's talk about a couple other notable features. Outliers is one. Now, not all data has outliers, right? All data has spread, center, and shape. Not all data has outliers. So if there are outliers, mention them, right? Now, I hope you guys know what an outlier is. It's an unusually large or unusually small value relative to the rest of the data. Right now, we're just using our eyes. But very soon, when we again, when we have the actual data in front of us, we will find a more specific way to identify outliers, 100% yes or no. But right now, we're just using our eyes. Gaps, not all data has gaps, but it's worthwhile to note gaps sometimes. So again, these were the um, final sale prices of some items and we see that there's this big gap right here. So there's just this one really expensive item. Again, maybe that's an outlier. Oftentimes outliers do create these gaps in your data where no data existed. Sometimes it's worth mentioning those if you're going to talk about the data. And here um, we see two clusters. Usually when we are bimodal, what that is telling us is there's two clusters of data. Like when you're talking about um, weights of males and females, if you put them all together, you typically get these two clusters because you know women are typically less than men. So we might see a center down here for women and a center up here for men. And that's typical when you're looking at data. Like, so when you do see bimodal data, there's usually a really good reason as to why the data is bimodal worth thinking about. So now what I wanna do is just wanna end this video looking at two examples because what you need to be good at is actually describing, analyze, and giving a good answer. I'm gonna give you a graph I'm going to tell you what that graph represents. And what I want you to tell me is a nice, well-written description about the distribution. Remember, a distribution is simply what values your variable takes on and how often it takes them on. And the best way to do that, talk about shape, talk about center, talk about spread. But I want you to learn that you've got to use full sentences and talk in a nice, clear way, going about the who, what, where, when, why as well. So... Here was a histogram of those 170, ooh, I thought it was 175. I could be wrong, I'm sorry, a little typo there. I don't know if it's 175, 174. I'd have to go back and check. But anyway, whatever, I, I, I digress. Okay, so here is um, a histogram of those heights. We clearly see that we have intervals of size 10 on the bottom. Each bin tells us how many trees fell into that height range. And now I want you to talk about the data. So don't forget about that intro. Always give that intro. The histogram shows the distribution of the heights of 175 oak trees from Ohio. Now let's talk about shape. The heights of the trees seem to be unimodal. I see this kind of one peak forming here. Yeah, there's a couple, you know, 20 to 30, 30, 40 are pretty close, but together they're forming that one peak. And it's also slightly skewed to the right. As the values, um, as the intervals get larger and larger, we see less and less and less and less trees in those intervals. So it's slightly skewed to the right. Don't be afraid to use adjectives or adverbs to describe what's going on here as well. And I even emphasize, like, don't just say it's skewed right. Talk about what that means, right? So what I said was it's slightly skewed to the right with most of the trees in the lower values and not so many trees above 50 feet. Then I talked about center. I said the data, this data seems to be centered around 35 feet tall since the majority of trees are near that value. 35 would be right around here. Heck, I don't even know if any trees are 35 feet, right? Remember, with the histogram, you don't know the actual data values, but again, that's okay. But it does appear that 35 would be about a center of the data, right? I can't think, I don't think you could argue with me on that. A typical tree is around 35 feet. Definitely there's some taller and there's some smaller. But again, try to find one value for the center that represents all the data. And then for the spread, I said the trees have a larger spread ranging from 10 to 80 feet. That's a pretty big spread when it comes to the height of a tree. However, the majority of trees are 20 to 40 feet tall. You know, if you think about it, about 82, there's about 40 trees here, 42 trees here, 82 trees. So a big chunk of trees are from 20 to 40 feet tall. So notice every time I talked about shape, set, and spread, I was mentioning the trees. I was using units of feet. I never just said, oh, the center's 35. 35 what? Oh yeah, feet, right? Talk about these values, use full sentences, and make sure you give me the who, what, where, when, why. I really like that. Add that bling, it's gonna give you really good answers. 
All right, the other thing we often like to do is give you two displays and compare. Now, when you compare, you want to compare. One's more, one's less. Compare and contrast. Don't just inform. Don't just be a robot and tell me everything about A and then move on to B. Talk. Compare. So let me just tell you what's going on here. So we launched ping pong balls, 40 in fact, 40 ping pong balls from two different catapults. So catapult A, put a ping pong ball in, launched it, and we did 40 launches from A, 40 launches from B, and every launch we recorded how far it went. Now, I know that there's some missing tick marks here, but for example, this would be 131, 132, 133, 134, and here's 135. You got to have to read in between the lines a little bit. All right, so I wanted to talk about the distributions. So, of course, I started off with a little bit of that introduction. After launching 40 ping pong balls from two different catapults, we see two different distributions. So, again, first sentence is just making sure that you know what it is you're looking at. Now, let's talk about the shape. It actually said that's something they have in common. Both appear to be roughly symmetric and unimodal. All right, you could maybe say that catapult A has a little bit of a bimodal going on here, and I'd be okay with that. But overall, we see this kind of this peak forming in the middle, but I couldn't argue if you said bimodal for A. But for B, we definitely see kind of this unimodal peak going on there. But they're both roughly symmetric, where we see a lessening on the left and a lessening on the right for both of these graphs. It's not perfect symmetric, but very few data is. Now I talked about the fact that they're um, centers. I said catapult A has a center right around about 136 centimeters. Well, catapult B has a center around a little bit higher, not much, but a little bit higher around 138. Again, you're trying to find that balancing point. And if you just look at the data, like if you kind of eyeball the data, the catapult B heights are all a little bit shifted to the right, not by much, but a little bit shifted to the right. So their center was a little bit higher around 138 centimeters. And then lastly, the spread. Catapult A is much more spread out possibly because of those few erratic throws, which could be outliers. We see catapult A has a low all the way down here, around 120, and a max, which could be an outlier, very far away from the rest of the data, 155. But that definitely makes catapult A look more spread out, worth saying that. Catapult B ranges from about 133 to 144, which means catapult B is more consistent, right? And again, you're launching these ping pong balls, Catapult B was consistently hitting the same values around 137, 138, 139, 140, kind of in that, in that range, right? Whereas Catapult A was a little bit more spread out. It had those erratic outliers on the left and the right. And even without those outliers, it's still spread out. It still had a couple of these higher throws here and these lower throws here where Catapult B did not have that. So again, you have to talk about everything that you see and use the words from the problem. Make sure you use units. I, I don't like it when kids say the center is, uh, maybe the center is between 130 and 140. Well, don't tell me that's not a center. That's a range. A center is a single value. Again, right now we're just kind of estimating with our eyeballs, but you could definitely tell that catapult B is a little bit higher as a center than catapult A. So talk about these things, mention these things, Give that bling. Make sure that you're giving a nice paragraph when you're asked to analyze a graph of quantitative data. All right, in the next video, we'll get a little bit more specific um, with looking at the actual data values, but still talking about shape, center, and spread. All right, see you guys later.